Chapter 1, Mishnah 4. Temura is an unusual kind of consecration in that it comes about through a substitution rather than by direct consecration. At the end of Mishnah 5, we will learn that an animal that became consecrated through Temura cannot in turn produce another Temura. As an introduction to this rule, this Mishnah and the next list a number of things with an unusual status that cannot produce something else with the same status. The Mishnah begins with a law about Teruma. Teruma may be eaten only by Kohanim and members of their families who are Tahor. If Teruma mixes with Chulin, ordinary produce, the entire mixture becomes forbidden to non Kohanim. Even Kohanim may eat it only according to the rules of Teruma. A Chulin Teruma mixture is known as Meduma. Teruma becomes nullified in Chulin only when there is 100 times more Chulin than Teruma. The first case of our Mishnah concerns a mixture in which Teruma fell into Chulin and did not become nullified. As a result, the mixture was Meduma. Part of this mixture then fell into more Chulin. We now turn to the words of the Mishnah. Meduma that falls into Chulin makes this a new mixture of Meduma based only on the proportion of Teruma it contained. As long as the second mixture contains enough Chulin to nullify the amount of Teruma that was in the Meduma mixture, the second mixture is permitted. It is not necessary for the second mixture to have enough Chulin to nullify all the Meduma that fell in, just the percentage of Teruma that was in it. Thus, the Meduma cannot make other Chulin into Meduma. Only the Teruma in it can make more Meduma. The Mishnah goes on to present a similar law regarding sourdough that is Meduma. Sourdough is dough that has been left out for a long time until it becomes sour, that is highly fermented. Small pieces of it are taken and added to fresh dough to speed up the leavening process and cause the fresh dough to rise more quickly. If sourdough made from teruma flour is added to chulin dough, the chulin dough becomes forbidden to a non kohen as menua, as meduma. The Mishnah teaches a rule about a case in which some of the meduma dough was then added to another chulin dough. Dough that was leavened with sourdough of teruma, thereby making it meduma, causes a chulin dough into which it falls to be considered leavened with teruma only in proportion to the amount of teruma that was in the piece of meduma dough that fell in. Since the original meduma dough contained only a small amount of teruma, most of it was chulin, the piece of meduma dough that fell into the chulin dough contained only a small amount of real teruma. When deciding whether this new chulin dough has become forbidden, we calculate only the amount of teruma that was present in the piece of meduma that fell in. If that small amount could by itself have caused this chulin dough to leaven, this dough also becomes meduma. If that small amount of teruma by itself could not have caused this chulin dough to leaven, the dough is permitted. We see here again that meduma dough cannot make another meduma. Only the teruma in it can do so. The Mishnah now teaches a rule about mikvah. As a, as a rule, for a mikvah to be valid, it must contain 40 sa'a of nat naturally collected water that has never been held in a container. Our Mishnah teaches that there is a way for a mikvah to be valid even when drawn water, water that had been collected in a container, is added before it contains 40 sa'a of natural water. Drawn water that is poured onto the ground outside a mikvah which then flows into the mikvah on its own, disqualifies the mikvah based only on the proportion of drawn water that the mikvah contains. If the mikvah contained a majority of the 40 sa'a it needed, i.e. 21 sa'a, the drawn water that flows in afterward can complete the 40 sa'a needed for the mikvah. But if the mikvah contained only 20 sa'a of natural water or less, the drawn water that flows in disqualifies even the natural water that was already there.